Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ladies of Sosa podcast. My name is Sada. My name is Christine. Today, we're actually doing the reactionary episode. <laughs> part uh, two. Part two of the last conversation we had. I think we had like a really good conversation on like colorism um, as South Sudanese and our experience as men and women. And now we're going to go ahead and jump into the second part of the conversation, which is um, the reaction, the reaction videos. videos. Yeah. Yes. And even the first conversation that we had in the last episode, I feel like we were trying to figure out the differences between being dark skinned as, you know, a man and a woman. And I think it's like you said, nuance, yes, like that word. Nuances. I think everyone yeah. has different experiences. And sometimes we try to use our own personal experience as the blanket for all dark skinned people but that's not fair because we all have different personalities different experience different family dynamics some of us have brothers some of us like i don't have any well i have a younger brother i don't have an older brother i don't have any sisters so i think all of that plays into yeah. kind of like your upbringing yeah so there's not um, like a blanket yeah experience. there's not a blanket experience for dark skinned people yeah so we're gonna go ahead and t- jump into the conversation with the part two and how we ended off was us well i was gonna get get into that like so scarlet who's a rapper um a dark skinned rapper she went she had an experience where she went to her bank and um the bank she just went in there just to do a regular with withdrawal i don't know if you guys have saw saw that video on the blog and the bank denied her like getting her money bro listen bro yo mt bank is racist as bro so why when I go to this M&T bank, I'm being profiled on some weird <laughs> where you live. I'm giving you, I, I give you my social security card. I give you my social security. Yo, bro, listen, bro, because I'm getting, this is getting me really mad. I give them my social security card. I give you my ID. I proved everything. So why are you not trying to let me make a transfer? Oh, she's saying, oh, I don't feel comfortable doing that. What the fuck you mean you don't feel comfortable? Bitch, give me my money. Now because you don't feel comfortable, I'm taking my money out this bank and I'm going to another bank. Because, like, y'all not about to be treating me all type of weird. You feel me? Like, uh, yo, I don't care if she call the cops. Because for real, it's just like, what are they going to do? Like, you going to call the cops on me for trying to make a transfer? I'm a business. I own a business. From her own bank. And so she was just like, she made a video just talking about like, how can I not get my own money? Like, this is like everybody, anybody can go into a bank and like ask for a withdrawal. Like, I don't think she was asking for a crazy amount. I think she was just trying to move around money. But a lot of people in the comments were saying, and these were black people saying, well, you don't look appropriate. Like, cause you know, she was wearing her natural hair. She, um, you know, she was natural. I mean, she just looked and and I think also like featureism comes into play and colorism because I think she she's dark skin and then she has like obviously black African features that people um, all like I think all over the world. Like we're still working on accepting that as like as the beauty standard. So can I can I put in context of that as well? Well, we got to introduce the panel. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> or the same. All right. So go ahead. All right. My name is Garang. I'm Vida. Manu. Willie. Arnaby. Dang. Tarek, go ahead and go ahead. We want to hear your point. No, no. What I was trying to say is like just put it in context and not and not to justify her racial profiling, but in, in, in Atlanta in about three, four years ago, Ryan Coogler, who is a who is a black director of Black Panther, was also denied receiving funds from, from a bank because they thought that he was doing 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 fraud. That's the only thing I was trying to say. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. You just want to add a man. In no, the no, no. Okay. The reason I want to add this is because there, there is a stigma of, 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 of people, bank employees, because uh, as far as bank employees is like being in finance and, and, and et cetera, is they do give you give, give you a heightened um, persona of fraud, and for some reason or another, a lot of times what's happening is that they take the news what's going on in the news as far as who are the fraudsters and they try to implement that as far as training so they want you to see somebody who who's a fraud now there is a, a racial aspect of it um aspect of it there 
because most of the people who are doing bank frauds online are not black. They're mostly, I mean, shout out to my Indian folks and, and white folks. Those are the people who usually do the bank frauds. But a lot of times, like the check frauds are, in, especially in Atlanta, it's scam city, scam capital, is mostly black people. Not that's not saying what happened there is justified, but I'm saying is like what a lot of times it's like it's down to to the training what's going on in the banks because when they see a black person coming in there to withdraw big funds, they may not see us as people who have the amount in that bank to withdraw mm-hmm. that. So they do stigmatize us and they see us as like we we spoke we like we spoken in the, in the last episode they see us as less of like wait a minute how what, what do you mean you have a million dollars in the bank account what do you mean you got a hundred thousand in the bank account because being being in the navy I used to have a lot of money in the bank account when I go to the bank I do get those looks it's like why are you withdrawing this amount of money because there is that look where you're not supposed to have this money that was my point yeah I mean do you, yeah, do you think that narrative could be changed though. Because it is a narrative that we have on black people. Yeah, uh, like we're, definitely. We're seen as less than. Uh, how do you think like we could change that narrative, though? And this is me putting in my joking hat. Wear dashiki, go in there as an African prince. Oh, my God. And they'll give you your money. <laughs> I do. Okay, so just basically. <laughs> That's messed up, but it's statistically the truth because, like, yeah. like it's, it, it is kind of messed up, but it's the truth. Like, in general, uh, you're going to have more of a successful Asian or African person then mm-hmm. they're going to initially think that you're African American, which is like the most fucked up part about it is like they're acknowledging the truth. But if you're Nigerian, they're going to think you're a scammer that's too. In, that's insane. That's though. ridiculous. You guys want, yeah. Like, why not normalizing but, because this? Might as like, well put on. No, uh, we're not normalizing it. It's just, it's just like, well, technically well speaking, speaking on, the dashiki yeah, yeah. is not might Nigerian. Might as well put on a clown. See? <laughs> you're the racist. Like clown makeup, yeah. you know, and yeah. go in there like, oh, can I have yeah. my money? No, but, but no, I. But I, I, who knows yeah. who Scarface? I don't think and you should Ryan have to Coogler do any like. any of that. Do you well, know what they look I like? I think you should have to. What? I know what Ryan Coogler looks like. You know what Ryan Coogler looks like? No, he doesn't. Do you know what Scarface looks like? I do. Like from social media, but white people aren't because it's a whole different ecosystem. Mm-hmm. People don't realize that the internet is so vast. But that's the stigma, you're not going to initially know because if it's just person. a random white lady Karen going in there to withdraw eight eight thousand dollars, they're not going to look at her differently. I understand what he's Scarface. what he's talking about as far as like um like statistics because I work in like commercial insurance underwriting and a lot of things are based on statistics like mm. even like with with your insurance like <laughs> they'll they'll bump your rates if you have a red car because red cars are statistically more likely to get into accidents so like things are based off statistics um and it's just like if there's like multiple claims on certain things like your rates will go higher and you can claim that that's discriminatory towards like but, certain but things. But, but, but when it comes to people, yeah, yeah that's, that's when it, that's the law. issue. Yeah, that's it's like that's actual law. that's but racism. Is, yeah. So I can understand it when it comes to products and like services or things like that that are more likely to be risk. But like but I don't like, think you should. Racially? You cannot view people like yeah, that. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. We really. Yeah. We really. Like, let me because I, I I do want to get to your point that's because crazy. I want to get to her point as far as like being in in finance because I I, I used to be in finance as far as mortgage and. Statistically Under, speaking, underwriting. statistically Under- speaking, if you are black and you're selling your home, and and the, and 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 the, and the assessors go to your home to assess your home, if you have your black family around and they and they are and and they are forecasting how much your home is worth, and I and I'm forgetting the word that 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 is supposed to be, it's not forecasting, but it's basically a, you're assessing how much your home is worth, and this, there there was actually a lawsuit, a big lawsuit here in Texas about that. Where this black man in in a white neighborhood, he was selling his home, but because he had his white family, his black family pictures around, they assessed his home less than what than than than, than what than, than what it's worth. And then when he got in, and then when he when he got the numbers, he was like, "Well, what's this is this is looking crazy." So when he got into another realtor, the realtor's like, "All right, let's take all the pictures down and put a white family." Mm. And then they brought the 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 person to come in to assess Crazy. the home mm. and Crazy, it appreciated yeah. 200,000 just based off of that. So there is that stigma as far as this your skin color when you go to a bank where you are when you are selling a home, when you're selling a car, when you even even when even when coming being in mortgage it's like if somebody calls a lot of times in mortgage it's like they oh I'm trying to buy a house and their name is Shaniqua, you already have some type of negative mm-hmm. connotation about them. It's like, all right, before you even look at their credit score, before you even look at their job history, they may be making 500000 a year, credit score 850 immaculate, but 
just based of their name, based of how they look, you already have a preconceived uh, notion, yeah. notion about them. And I think that's the, a lot of happens is like because a lot of these, a lot a lot of these a lot of these tellers they're they're getting paid ten fifteen dollars an hour. They're just going off the training that that you would say that that was that's happening at that point. So they're just going off based off of that training. Yeah, and but I they're think not they're able to assess these that. things will continue to happen because America is a racist country and there are racist systems. We live in a caste system. So I, I, the thing I, about I, I it that. is that I love America. whenever you're in a caste system and there's a designated people that are going to be on the bottom who have continues to be on the bottom. It doesn't matter how high you ascend on the ladder. They will always try to find a way to humble you. So that yeah. is really what it was. That's what Ryan Coogler went through. And that's what Scarlett went through. And just being put in their place and essentially like, you know, you're not supposed to be able to take this much amount of money out, you know. And that's what happens whenever you're in America. Like, that's why even when police brutality happens, it's that's really that's one of the symptoms of being in a country where racism has been since the inception and no one is actually, I don't say no one, but like these systems that have been going on for as long as they have, they're not trying to go against the grain. You but know, I, they're trying right. to maintain but, but, but it. You think my question is like, yes, we know that that's happening on a society level. It's like, so are we, do you feel like we should, like you were saying, put on a dashiki to go do that or... <laughs> Or like, or like, or, or like, or like, fight, or fight against it. No, or, or just accept how it is. <clears throat> or, or do we have a responsibility? Can I say something? Are you asking me? Can I say? No, I'm not wearing a dashiki just to make you comfortable. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no that's <laughs> facts. Not to make but I do, I do think what we need to do is ha start having banking Our system that is yeah. for us. Because the last, if you if you ever go to a to any bank, you know you you don't see an Arab there. You don't see a Chinese person there. Because they have banking system that's for them. When I when I went to LA, there's literally a Korean bank that's for Koreans only. When you go to New York, there's a Chinese bank that's for Chinese only. Even Arabs, because in 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 Islam, there's no there's no usury, so there's no there's no interest. So they don't believe in interest. You, you're not gonna see a, a Muslim person in in a bank. Well, you you might, but a lot of time of them is like they get their their banking is done in a different section. So what I think. As Africans, it's like okay, so we have all this wealth. There, should, there, there, there could be a Nigerian bank, there could be an East African bank. Me personally, I feel like Africa should be a confederation, and we just become like Europe, that like the way the euro does it, and have a an Afro bank and do it that way. But the way how we keep the dollar in our community as, and this is me putting my black hat, is we have to start banking and putting money into black commute black businesses black banks black etc because we can't we can't really put it in sudanese banks because there's not enough sudanese people in america to actually have a bank but we have to kind of go ab above that and go like okay we all are black people let's put let's have a black bank a black grocery store a black something that's for us yeah. and by I, us and i agree and i think Dr. Umar, I don't agree with this man on like probably majority of his things, but he does man. have points. <laughs> yeah. I think in a in a clip I saw, he was talking about hip hop. But one point that I did like that he mentioned was just how black people, we need to have our own institutions as far as education, hospitals, banks. Because the thing is, we're going to continue to be a racist country because these the, these are the ways the systems have work. It's going to take a lot more labor to, you know, de- you know, take away all these racism, like all these things to be anti-racist is going to take a lot more effort um, than to maintain the systems that have continued to go. And a lot of systems don't want to change. So I feel like the only way to combat it, um, one of a good way to combat it is by having our own institutions, having our own places where we know we're not going to experience that type of harm. I, I understand what you guys are saying. And, it, and it's true, but it's so hard. Like, how are you going to compete with Chase? You know, like yeah. how like they have ATMs everywhere. Oh, or, or like, and like, you know, it's like so like even if I wanted to bank with a black bank mm -hmm. in terms of convenience, you know, like the, uh, in terms of the, the level of access that these banks already have, mm -hmm. that small bank it's like in order to get to that level, it's going to be it's going to be almost impossible. And I agree. And something that he and mentioned, and I'm not saying mm -hmm. I co-sign everything he said, but I feel like it's I think it's really important for us to imagine better than we have right now that's, instead that's of true. trying to you know where that she to go to the bank i feel like we need instead of trying to continue 
Um, I, I had a comment even ap- about the Dr. Umar video. One thing I don't like is that in the black community, you're never allowed to criticize anything. Like, <sighs> and I feel like how do we bring about change that's where fact. you're never allowed to call out anything that's wrong? Mm-hmm. You know, so that to me, it's like if you say something about hip hop, it's like, oh, no, like, mm-hmm. you know what he was saying in the yeah. video. Mm-hmm. If you say, you know, the crime rates, like maybe we need to work on some things in the community. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, you can't. Don't, don't yeah. say that. Mm-hmm. But it's like it's kind of true. Like it can it doesn't it's not a bad thing to say, hey, you know, there are some members of the community who are painting us all as a whole in a bad mm-hmm. light by their actions. Mm-hmm. And yeah. instead of condemning them, it's like we basically try to sweep it under the rug because it's like, keep it in the family. But everybody sees our dirty laundry because, you know, everything's on social media. Every time something happens, it's like, you know, you even see the comments like, oh, I hope it's not a black person because it does reflect on the whole. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, if if that's the case, because like that, that, that to me feels like faux because black people are punished the most. Black people are hurt the most. Black people go through the most when it comes to all this different stuff. So when our image, quote unquote, gets ruined, it doesn't matter because they view us as that anyway. So when we, when we when we when we criticize ourselves, yes, it should be amongst us and they shouldn't be allowed to have an opinion on it. And that's what we do. T- we tend to broadcast our critiques of each other to everybody else. And then they get to have a piece of it mm-hmm. and they get to have a piece of the criticism and not let us be able to handle our own systems. So when they get involved, what happens? They declaw everything. They take our our gangs, everything else, and they take the leaders out of it, and they completely destroy everything. Now we have kids killing kids uh, instead I, of like a system like the the Italians had, can, like can all I, these different okay. people had. So, can, can I can can I put that while you while you on there? Because there's there's been a big movement in in Twitter, and I, I'm I'm on Twitter heavy. My name is different there. Uh, no, don't follow me because I, I say it's a lot of crazy stuff Mm -hmm. but there's been a lot of movement there where it's foundational black american versus africans tethers that's what they call what do you tethers that's what it says tethers (laughs) see my my twitter folks right there there my twitter folks right there (laughs) what do you say about that go 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 ahead emmanuel explain it expound on that okay what what do you what do you think about that is there a difference between anybody that's foundational black Black american versus a tether is basically an African. Basically, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. outside Native American. Americans, people. So yeah, yeah, t- yeah. T- tether to me feels like CIA psyops, and you can't tell me it's not anything else because the dumb conversations we have on Twitter. See, that's my point. Black of people, never being allowed. Ah, but, but no, 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 let, let, let me continue. No, no, don't go there. Don't go through that. How is it CIA? Actually, when it's... yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't think, go. Think go. about what he's trying. He's trying to get away from me because no, no, because no, no, here's the thing: a tether is a person that comes to this. Don't worry about the tether. Do you think there's a difference between? Financial black American yeah. versus an African because I feel like there is even though I was born in Africa, most of my life was raised in America. I they, I, I joined the, they I joined built the this military country. and I was ready to die for this country. Yeah. So technically that. speaking, you, you, I am African American. Yeah, yeah, you are African American. So do you think there's a difference between and you, those you, two? You deserve every bit of America that you fought for and did everything for. Yeah. But your ancestors ain't do nothing for this country. But be honest with us. Yeah. Let's be real. They are, got us here. If it wasn't for their hard work, yeah. if it wasn't for what you they are, you are the resident African American right now. If African Americans win in their struggle in the United States, that is a blueprint for us in Africa and the rest of the world. So with their struggle for reparations, it equals to the conversation about what Sudan needs from England, what Sudan needs from the Arab world, what Sudan needs from every other person that has had been able to take a part of South Sudan. Right? I, 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 that I that is like, a fallacy. I think, I think that goes. You're, in we're time. assuming like that Some all of African Americans are one of the, they believe the same no, thing. Yeah, yeah. They don't, that's they don't, that's they don't, a group of a they, section of black. I think that we all, as a black diaspora, learn from each other. Mm-hmm. Like we learn from Marcus, like Africans learn from Marcus Garvey and like uh, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, but they also learn from like the South African leaders, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Mandela. Who did they and, get help like, from? <laughs> Well, we, uh, but I think we all learn from each other. You know what I'm saying? Against. It's not, a, it's not, not a competition. It's, it's, we all, we want, want, we all want the same solution. Yeah. The question is, how do we get there? Yeah. No. But I do agree with you. I do agree with you, Christine, when it comes to, when it comes to the whole, um, uh, you know, like criticizing the, the own community, our own community. People are like, oh, you're, you're using conservative talking points. You sound just like Fox News. Like, no, you can say, hey, you know, this, like, there's, there's a lot of killings. In, in, in black communities. And for some reason, that is offensive to say, to point out a fact that actually is happening. 
Abraham, a lot of young I, black men are, are murdering so. each other. It, what is that wrong to say that? I understand it, it but like it let's is. be this. Let's know, be loud know, about the lack of know, funding know, for not, schools as well. That, That's saying, what I'm trying to say. But, yeah, but like, uh, yeah, you li- but like, you see, my like, point. if you say something, it's like, <laughs> oh, but yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> what, what is your like, exactly. Why can't we just no, 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 Cops are murdering black people, but at the same time, as an individual, when when you're getting pulled over, know your your life is on the line. So you do whatever the cop is telling you. That sounds wrong, but if you want to survive, you you, you have to, you know. Because if you if you're in that moment, if you're like fuck this, fuck the system, you might actually die, you know, and you're useless if you're <laughs> man, dead, man. you know. So you man. might have to actually to like follow man. the the but rules. Put your even if the cop is racist, there's like in that moment. You 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 you're useless if you're dead. Yeah. You know, okay, so you don't want to do it. anything that 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 you know you that might seem your life. yeah to jeopardize it's your not, life. It's not worth it. We've yeah, seen exactly. videos of everybody but did everything perfect and they got it's not, yeah. it's not, it's not, I'm not, not saying that well, that doesn't happen. But it's like, not, it's still, not that. Like, but I think, I think I'm point, not saying like if you if, if they acted perfect, it wouldn't happen. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You're still a nigga. Like at the end of the day, no matter what you want to do. So if you get pulled over the cover, you don't care. Your identity politics do not fucking matter because at the end of the day, you still a nigga. They don't right. give a fuck about you. Nobody's but, saying. Can I say? Can I say? Nobody's saying. No, no. Nobody's saying like. Tyrant's nobody's saying like that doesn't happen. Not about that. I'm Let saying it, it, it happens. We all know it happens. But also in that moment, do what you can to survive. Yeah. If you go back to the 1940s, 1950s, Japanese were in inter- was in, 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 in was in internment camps in America. These rights that y'all be trying to jump into, these rights can get tossed away very quickly. What you need to have is a country or a continent behind you. Chinese people, when 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 people was jumping them in New York in California, in two years they they passed a law about 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 about, about hate crimes against Asian America. So what I'm trying to say is like a lot of times it's like it's about what we're doing back home in Africa is connected to what we do here because at the end of the day it's like you can say you're a financial black American. But you're still like, like Emmanuel said, you're still a nigga. You're still from Africa. We we put so much so much emphasis on these minorities who are loud, these loud minorities. They're no, they're nobodies. There there are so many bigger people who are pushing a message. Mm-hmm. If you go if you go to um, Burkina Faso, who's the the, the the president who who just who just got there with a coup, who just kicked out of France, who kicked France out. You go to Mali, who kicked France out mm-hmm. because Mali is, is the biggest export of uranium. They were selling uranium to France for 20 cents a dollar, 20 cents on, on, on a gram. When uranium is cost $220 in the world market a gram. So there's so many countries in West Africa, and this is not even, this is not even talking about East, Af- East Africa, South Africa, that, that have so much wealth. Congo is by itself have so much wealth that it can dictate the world movement. And we don't, and we don't have that in, 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 in us because when China became a world power in in the 1960s 1970s nobody no nobody is, is fucking with chinese no more because they know there's somebody behind them who's going to come there and be like no we're not doing this stuff i agree with you as far as like black people we need like a like a home backing like you know how like if chinese people are being discriminated mm-hmm. against china's yeah have china's like don't play that and like a lot black people here in america like who's gonna have who's what country is gonna have and i want to tirade like, you know africa doesn't even have their stuff together mm-hmm. but I do also think that, like, I know you said that, like, FBA, like the Foundational, foundational Black um, Americans, or Tether? No. No, it's Foundational we're Black the, oh, Americans. Oh, we're the Tether. See, this is what I was trying to get back to you. My bad. But, like, FBA the... or um, ADOS, they also call themselves FBA ADOS. versus the Tether. But yes. I think it's a lot of it's just loud minorities. Well, or... I think that, like, um, I know you it's said Twitter. that, like, like they're, a minority, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're a minority, like, voice. But I do think what I've learned from, like, having these discussions is that like we do have to speak in nuances as Africans because our experience is slightly different and you don't want to like, you don't want to create parallels where there is none, you know, like I I think that like we can agree with each other, like Mm -hmm. Africans and black and black Americans, we can share experiences, but there's also nuances to our experience. And I think that we should respect those nuances. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, like you said, you said in the episode, one of the episodes too, we come to America um, how white people view Africans is slightly different than how they view like the the black Americans here because mm. 
Africans, they kind of have like a sympathetic view of us. It's like, mm. oh my goodness, feed the children. Like yeah. we have to help them. Like the church mm. organizations help. A lot of black Americans don't have that same mm. like sympathetic mm. lens put on them. So mm. we also have to like be understand <clears throat> the difference of experiences. I do agree that like sometimes we've like, Africans, there's a lot of pressure put on Africans. They're like, oh, you guys are not us. When we share experiences, mm. the same as you. Yeah. Like, we've and been through the uh, same um, thing. I think it was, but, was it Chris that was here last time? Yeah. When we were having the um, African-Americans panel, he yeah. was on the on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he kept saying, like, we're all going through the same battle, but we don't see it. Yeah. We don't realize that we're going through the same battle, going mm -hmm. through the same fight against what's going on. Yeah. You know, we the have, same fight in know, different ways. Yeah, it's exactly. Hard. So saving, I think it's, like, important but, to realize, again, like, the different ways that you're... So like many African countries mm -hmm. going through through different battles. The Nigerians are are not feeling the same way we feel as South Sudanese. We don't feel the same way Ethiopians feel because we're so fractured. There's yeah. no one voice. Yeah, those people could come after me. I don't know. Maybe I should have no, waited for them. Like, for, I think for I, what's his name to come defend them? But like, Twitter is it? A... No. <laughs> 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 but like, but like the fact that uh, they say that uh, they're Native Americans, like. Yeah, there's no scientific basis to what they're saying, you know? It's yeah, like they're trying would... to separate themselves from Their Africanism. Don't even accept yeah. Because they view Africanism as like something something bad yeah. or but wrong Africans or like look also, down on us. Also, Africans like, also separate themselves from black Americans. Yeah. So we so, like, yeah. we create we, separations exactly, and exactly. say like, like, oh, we don't do that. We don't yeah. do that like this. Like, mm -hmm. So we we both do it to each other. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, but that's, that's a different type of separation, though. That's a cultural separation. Oh, you can you okay. can you can be separated culturally, but not genetically, like but, you say the but DNA. But do you not see how that that's kind of like um go that's, that's go to like a soul go go to humanizing if you, if, like oh we're not like you. No, if if you go to a soul food restaurant and, and you eat some greens, is that not the same food that you eat at home? Kumunimia, they that's not like the, y'all 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 talking about kum, kum, you're talking about kumunimia. Kumanea, whatever that <laughs> I'm messing up the words. <laughs> Chitlins is the same thing. It's intestines. It's the same thing we eat. Because there is there there's a cultural tether there. I don't want to say the word tether, but in a way, like the FBA is like they want to separate that from there. But if you go to like Brazil, Brazilians they are in tune with their African culturalism. But if you go true? if you go to Africa right now and you ask somebody, I don't feel like that's if you go if you go to Africa right now and, and you and you uh, say, do you know is. any Brazilians? Nine times out of ten, they're gonna they're gonna tell you they're gonna name you a soccer player. West Africa is actually pretty close to Brazil. Basically, I think uh, no, it's um, I think we have a lot more common today as like uh, African American or African Americans and Africans and you know foundational blacks than they did in the past. I think that just changes yeah. it. Yeah, it, it mm -hmm. just changes yeah, it. Closer. Especially, mm -hmm. I'll say even like the um, just the little um, I'll say like me growing up in America, you know, it's like uh. I'm more. I have more in common with the Black Americans here than I do with even Sudanese. So it's like even yeah, when yeah. I do hear um, this stuff, it's like uh, I think it does take those people that are not necessarily oh full South Sudanese or you know oh I'm a foundational Black American. It's like I think we're more divided than unified. In reality, there's a billion like things that divide us. But you know, it's crazy. No, can we stick on that though? What he just said in the end mm -hmm. when he said that as Africans in America, we're Take we technically closer to the African Americans than we are the Africans. Because let me tell you something. Well, that's already yeah, that's already been known. Nah, because a lot a, a, a lot of a lot of Africans here, a lot of Sudanese people here, they act like they're not African American. It's like crazy. Have you been home? Nope. Because because a I couple of episodes ago, how a couple much, of episodes ago, when I said about a shower, people looked at me like I'm crazy. How African much American? do you feel like connected to mm -hmm. like like you know connected to Su South Sudan? Or connected to like um, America, which is Black America because we're Black. Mm -hmm. So how do you like how connected? What's the percentage? Like, like I went yeah, to school if, with Black people my whole life. Yep. America, so yeah. So what's yeah, the percentage? What what you the <laughs> no, I'm definitely South Sudanese American, yeah. just because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I have that other side to me of like my culture at home, but I do feel just super connected to African American people because I feel like we are the same people. We just have different cultural background but i grew up with them i went to their house they slept over my house like it's normal like the culture the way we talk the music we listen to yeah like yeah. i feel like it's all interconnected but when you get down to the root of it sometimes it's mm -hmm. like okay you're different than me in this aspect yeah and i'm different than you in this aspect 
and we let it be so big. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we all grew up together. Well, nah, I don't know. she gave she yeah. gave you an yeah, out. Yeah, so you believe she said, Americans have a she culture? She says right? South Sudanese uh, American. Who said How do you? Nobody said that. No, no, hold on. Because I hear, I hear. No, no, no. We got to say that all the time. But no, we got to get to the to the question. She said it. The question is: How do you? Are you South Sudanese and American? Yeah. What is the the percentage? Honestly, like I. Because I feel like I'm seventy percent black American. Yeah. And 30% yeah, South, South Sudanese. Sudanese. So I've yeah. always, always thought that yeah. I was like, I'm more South Sudanese mm-hmm. than anything. Mm-hmm. But then like outwardly, like how do until people you go, view until you? Went yeah. to South Sudan, because huh? um, a lot of people like, um, like obviously I grew up here in America. Yeah. And if like I take an Uber or I go anywhere, everyone's like, oh, I could tell you're Af- like, I could see that you're African or yeah. I can tell, mm-hmm. I can see that. But like you speak mm-hmm. like english like you, you speak oh, yeah, like yeah. perfect english like your you um your culture is kind of kind of relates to me even though like um I, we have our own south sudanese culture yeah. but it's like oh how much how much american am i versus so what's south the percentage sudanese? and then the like percentage. even with like ladies of sosa like a lot of people from south sudan are like oh y'all are so americanized mm-hmm. you know so they kind of like in a way they kind of like other you a little bit but they kind of show you they kind of put a merit mirror on you to show you like you're you're not you're sudanese but y'all are not like fully mm-hmm. south sudanese so we need, the, we need like the numbers though i'll say i'll say say, uh, say the number what's the number even what's the number, yeah, what's the number? I, I think i'm, 50, I'm gonna say 50 50 50 okay. yeah no 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 they, they say the number they say the number okay yeah yeah no no she's gonna be no the hell she said 50 50 but no 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 okay realistically um you said 80 20 no 70 30 yeah the problem is like you know even so I, I haven't been back to South Sudan. I haven't been back nowhere. Mm. And I grew up in a small city. So growing up, it's like they grouped us as black people. And then on top of grouping us as black people, I'm like, all right, I'm black. But then the blacks are like, no, you're not like black. us. Yeah, yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like I'm on this side. So it's like I was in the black community, but I still had areas where it's like you're not allowed. No, yeah. no, no, you're not. Yeah. These I are agree. our neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. You know, these are our neighborhoods. Yeah. You come over here, we still, you still yeah. an outcast. Yeah. So it's like I'll say I have certain things about me that are black. Mm. And then being separate from South Sudan, it's like I don't got the full experience of being South Sudan. It's like, yeah, what, what is you've South never Sudan? Been there. No. Yeah. How was that at the Olympics though? Because oh, you were around so many crazy. South Sudanese people. Oh man. People. I'll say even Jeez. I didn't know people lived over there. I didn't know South <laughs> Sudanese lived over there. It's it's weird to say, yeah. but yeah. it's like some people were telling me they speak Finnish and stuff like that, and I'm like, oh yeah, they they bad as hell. Though. Yeah. Like, hold you. I, good. You say Finnish? Finnish, 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 Finnish. Or yeah, Finnish. It, was that, it was actually a South Sudanese Swedish. Yeah, wrestler. There's that South Sudanese all over Europe, and I, people don't even. I know that. Bro, she's yeah. the one. Yeah. We're doing, we doing too much. Like, it feels like South Sudan exploded. Get, we'll go, we're like in Finland. Yeah, ah, Finland. no, no. Let's keep yeah. going. Let's yeah, keep, yeah. We gotta get to this video. No, but um, yeah. yeah. When I was over there, it's like there are so many Sudanese, and we're all from different places, you know, because we all came for the Olympics. Mm-hmm. And what was crazy is that it's, I, I don't know. It was just it made me smile for real because it's like no matter what you come from or whatever there's like this draw between Sudanese yeah it's we're like, still yeah. South Sudanese yeah. Like right when I, see yeah. Yeah. I feel like the older that I get I become more and more South Sudanese like I feel like I'm becoming yeah. an auntie in a sense like you <laughs> like I feel like I get you get back to your roots like I grew up in the church I grew up and I feel like a lot of my mm-hmm. culture came from being in Kenisa, just singing Kenisa, songs yeah. it just it, it feels yeah. good to sing like you know out of Ijuba I yeah. like when I came to Dallas like I didn't know a lot of like Sudanese people and you just have this like you miss it like you take it for granted yeah. whenever you have access to it yeah but then when you don't have it it's just like I don't feel like I'm yeah. complete so I don't you feel, like feel I'm more cool. South Sudanese I but mm, well, I feel, I don't know if I could ever, like, cut myself in half. So I feel like I can, I'm not going to put a number to it. What's the percentage of? Because I feel like socially I can be South Sudanese. Socially I could be, you know, American. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like, ancestrally, brand. like, I have, I'm South Sudanese. Yeah. And that's something that I'm always, I feel like the older I get, I'm always going to go back to that. So do you feel like the older you got, you kid. become more South Sudanese? I feel like I become more South Sudanese So back when sure. you was younger, you was turned yeah. up. All right, I want to, Emmanuel and Willie, how do y'all feel? Yeah. I mean, I'm starting to realize all of y'all are like Childish Gambino when it comes to the, I am too Sudanese for the, no, nobody know who Childish thing. Gambino is. But I'm not Sudanese enough for the people back home. I'm sorry. I'm being a dick. Why but that's true. Who's Childish that's, Gambino? That's Where's the sounded, lie? Y'all sounded, <laughs> sounded like that. I'm too black for the white kids, but I'm too, you know. No, it's just introspective. But right. like, if we're, if we're being honest with ourselves, like, for me, my denka is garbazio. So bad that like, even people... <laughs> On the podcast and people, videos have gone viral of just how bad yeah. my Arabi Juba, Kamuna. horrible, 
and everything is just bad. But at the end of the day, <laughs> what did he say? Yeah. Y'all will not escape me. <laughs> okay, y'all will not escape. Me. I will keep speaking my language, and I will keep Amen. because technically me. speaking, Emmanuel, there's not I'm really not, a lot of big dinka people. That's like a white what person. The fuck did that tall. Huh? <laughs> it's not he really brought a lot that of, out of his pocket. <laughs> I just had a conversation with my uncle about this, and I was like, "Yeah, at the end of the day, I'm both. I'm fifty. Yeah, I'm really 80-20. 80, 20. 80, 80, Which 30. one is the 80? Wait, no, 80-20, 80-20. 110%? <laughs> what? You, yeah. you have to I'm get 80% Sudanese-American. Uh-huh. 20%... There's no Sudanese-American. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, that it, makes sense. African-American and Sudanese. No, 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 no. There's no Sudanese-American. Sudanese-American got its own vibe. Separate the Sudanese-American. Sudanese-American is his own culture because we built our own culture. And we cannot deny it. That is our own culture. So what's what's Sudanese-American culture? It's real. It's really black. Thank you. That's a cop-out. He's copping out. But how can we build our own culture? It's a cop-out. No, he's copping out. No. We have our own models. We have our own people that we view as celebrity. We even have our own gossip. I'm not Okay, how I think who we are, are is we can't. South there's South a, there's less than a hundred thousand South Sudanese. There's no like I am twenty percent African American. I'm eighty <laughs> yes. percent. No. You're South Sudanese. The American, you're, American. The American like in you like is what makes you I like like, like that. Right? Like That's that. why when you go yeah. to be That's around other South Sudanese from other places, it's. Cause you're American, you're that's different. why you different. Yeah, you still true. different. Yeah, so oh, it's different. I just made this conversation for the sake of like trying to be. Messy. That's how we yeah. all get along. I just want to be messy, okay? Because we exactly. all, you know, we vibe. all have Honestly, similar experiences. Honestly, to me, yeah. it, it depends on because the day. Because it's our culture. It depends exactly. on the day. Exactly. Yeah, we're South Sudanese Americans. Exactly. Sometimes I'm in situations where I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I'm Sudanese. I'm very, I'm very South Sudanese. Yeah. yeah. And then there's situations where I know, like, I'm black. Like, you know. Yes. At the end of the day, I'm black. Like, whatever. Like. Like whatever you see, something goes on on news or something, or mm-hmm. like the Trayvon Martin mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. Like you know, black, yeah. the blackness in me is just it's so out, like outraged. To... Like you know, I'm in pain as a black person. Yeah, you I, know, and I'm out yeah. protesting and everything. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't. It's hard to separate and be like you know, like yeah. when when Kendrick Lamar is talking about uh, uh, they're not like us. I feel like. I'm I'm like us. You know? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. You're not wrong. Do what you. You know? like, what? No, oh, but like I do feel like I am. You know what I mean? Right, right. I'm like fuck I'm like yeah. Us. You know like you know like yeah yeah, yeah. you know like yeah. drink. You're not like us. Yeah. You know like I feel like you know. <laughs> Like us, he's an immigrant. Drake is an immigrant. That's right. Drake is an immigrant. No, he's not like us. Well, he's, from, he's Canadian, <laughs> so he like to, black, to, to, Af- to hip-hop yeah, he's culture, not, he's, he's not. He's not with the struggle. He didn't grow up in hip-hop culture? Yeah, he's not with the struggle. That's what I'm saying, you know? Yeah. And we grew up in a struggle, even in Utah, Salt Lake City. Exactly. I 100% agree with you as far as like police brutality and Trayvon Martin. Like the Trayvon Martin situation, that like, I remember that just like triggering me so much. Mm-hmm. I still remember that day mm-hmm. and like how, like, I don't know. It just like impacted me. And I think for me, I felt connected to whatever him and like being black, like blackness mm-hmm. was not like African mm-hmm. or like, mm-hmm. or black you saw, American you saw your own community. brother, like, yeah. like getting like murdered, you know, he yeah. was my yeah. age, bro. Like yeah. I watched that shit. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. It, it reminded mm-hmm. me of like a friend or somebody that I knew or like mm-hmm. a cousin or somebody that like, mm-hmm. like just was killed. And then the person got away with it. Mm-hmm. So um, did you that, lose some white friends real quick? Oh I, well, I I remember posting because I was it was like we were, this was like when I was a little younger. I remember like commenting on a whole bunch of stuff like going off on people because I was going crazy. I was like, nah, like this is hey, bullshit. You know, like, you know, you, you justice know you, for Trayvon Martin. And I was know, you, on you, every news. You know, site. you've won in the comments when somebody is sending you a personal yeah, message. That was the first time that I like really like. Um, internalized something like that now like police brutality like now is like it's unfortunately common for me mm. and i know it's happened before with like rodney mm. king but like for me that was like the first time it hit home yeah can so, i point uh, this can, out can that, that bothered me reply to that like as yeah. a person who grew up in a neighborhood where it's like a little bit more you know rougher <laughs> yeah yeah um and with people that been have Florida, had around man. me that had to deal with like more officers and stuff like a lot of the times when i first saw the trade my mind thing i was like oh oh yeah okay that happened and then I saw everybody else with a reaction to it. And I was like, oh, this isn't normal. This is their first time seeing something like this. Yeah. And like I was like, oh, fuck. This isn't like what is supposed to happen. And that's what I was like, oh, damn. Okay. Shout out to shout out to everybody finally realizing that being black is being black. Yeah, that's fair. If Martin was like when we were younger, I was like maybe a teenager. Like teenage, like maybe like, I don't remember. When did the Trayvon Martin? 2014? 
No, 2012. No, it like it was earlier before that. As somebody, yeah. 2012. Mike Brown was 2012. Yeah. Mike Brown. Nah, yeah, so, somebody, like 10 years ago. So we were really young at that time. So that was my first time mm. with like the police protect. Like, and he wasn't even a police officer, but just mm. like the racial, like the injustice, mm. because it wasn't even even just like Zimmerman. Him, he, yeah, he, he it wasn't, wasn't even just him officer. dying. This he got, wasn't. He wasn't a police Zimmerman, officer. He was like yeah. a neighborhood watch. But it wasn't even just like him passing away. It was like the injustice that happened mm. afterward. Yeah, that was just so triggering. Um, and I, and I didn't see myself as like African. I mm. saw myself as a black person in America. I'm yeah. like, I don't know. This is like, mm. absolutely like, mm. this is unacceptable. Mm. Um, so I think a lot of African people feel that way too. Like we, we, we resonate with black people here and we understand the struggle. And sometimes black people don't think that we do like the black people. And the, the, and the level like how, how yeah. much tuned in we are to the culture, like anything that goes on. Like in pop culture about other black people, we are very into yes, it. Yes. Like, you know, we yeah. pay attention to it. It's I mean, like, it's and, not and a, I, it's, yeah. We're and, right and there. I'll say we this, don't think I mean, that we're better I mean, all the time. Yeah. I'm not going to say That's, that we don't think that we're better, but not all the time. A lot of times we resonate with So you feel like you're people. better sometimes? No, I, I, no, <laughs> no, don't, don't do that. I think that the, like, their grievances with Africans feeling like they're better mm -hmm. is justified in certain cases. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like, We, there's a lot of Africans that really resonate with them, what their experience, what mm. their injustice is. Like, like there's so many things that we can relate to, not mm. even just back here, like in America, but like back home, we've experienced the same things. Like we grew up in pro close proximity to like Arab, like Arab culture where mm. us black people were not, we were, we were discriminated against. And there was mm. a lot of like injustices we're that happened to, to us. We're used to 1960 style racism. And I think when you come to the United States, you don't realize the difference in the style of racism. Because let's be honest with ourselves, the Arab world is they're going to call you a slave, they're going to put you in jail, or they're going to take yeah. you out. Like it's, I mean, it's a different level the, of racism. It, it's a different level. Texas is not racist. There's there's no racism in Texas. The way, you and when I say, that's that's racist. Racist. No, what? let me finish my point. See, I, I, I didn't, I didn't allow me to finish my point. When I say <laughs> there's no racism in Texas the way that it is in Florida. I grew up in Florida. Like when Trey, when Trey, when Trayvon Martin got shot by George Zimmerman in 2012. The next year, Jordan Davis got shot two blocks down from where I used to live in, in my apartment. In the gate gas station, I, I get gas from every single time when I go to work. So the racism that was going on in, in Florida at that time that allowed George Zimmerman to go because it was a law that got passed. Stand your ground. That stand your ground law. And, and a lot of that racism that, that, went off of that there's been so many people that got killed there, there's another famous shooting was a guy who got killed protecting his 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 his, his girlfriend coming off of a gas station and a guy killed him where george zimmerman be became the catalyst of that where they had to like change that law in florida because a lot of and i and and, and i hate to say this but it was a lot of white people i was trying to justify that Where literally, because in 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 Texas there is there is the castle doctrine, where the castle doctrine is that if somebody's in your house that you do not want them in your house, you, you are allowed them. to shoot them. And a lot of people don't don't realize that. So a lot of times, as a as somebody who was black when I used to live in McKinney, when something happens in somebody's neighborhood, I do not go in their yard because I know about the castle doctrine, because there are so many laws that get passed that we as black people may not know. And this is why I tell a lot of people is like, whether it's Trump, whether it's Kamala Harris, it doesn't matter. Those presidential elections don't matter. Those senators don't matter. It's about your representatives, about your local government, it's about what's happening in your state, in your city. Because there are so many laws that get passed that you may not know what it is, but your neighbor may know what it is. Because if somebody knocks on my door and I don't want them and I shoot them, technically speaking, I can get away with it. And kind of just going in in Florida and in Texas. Texas. In Texas is the Castle Doctrine is even further than than what Florida is cuz Florida is stand, is stand your ground. Castle Doctrine is like if you come to my house and for some reason or another I don't want you to be I there. I breaking into your house. No, you just in my property. Okay. That's like that that's like Castle Doctrine but <clears throat> but in the stand the stand your ground in Florida got got pushed back a lot from that George Zimmerman because in George Zimmerman case It was basically where it's if any threat you feel that you are being that you your bodily ha um, harm is happening, you are allowed to shoot them. So that's what he kind of justified that use for and went to grand jury, et cetera, et cetera. 
but what I by kind of going back to you know the the difference between you know black american and and africans is, is as far as like how we feel about each other is that because when that when that happens a lot of times what we see as as Af- as african americans what they're seeing is like yo I don't, I don't know if y'all know the shooting about Julio Fulio and Young and Ace rappers in Florida. No. Yeah, we know. Well, so there was some beef. I'm not saying this rapper did this, but but Julio Fulio got killed in Tampa, and his beef was some dudes. They got they got found out. Five guys from Florida, from Jacksonville, drove five hours from Jacksonville to Tampa to just kill this one guy. But as they're going through there. They they went through Orlando. They went they went through all the places George Zimmerman was in, and none of them touched them because it's that perception of this is our people. We're gonna kill them. We, we don't care about our, our, our repercussion. They went past George George Zimmerman because as oh, as, so th- as oh, black okay. people, it's like the the way our thinking is that we are. It's going back to like way back what we think we are less of. We think we can kill our own. But we can't kill this one person who who did bad to us because they're better than us, and and and, and a lot of times that's that, that's what comes that come, comes down to it is because these people went from a five hour drive from Jacksonville to Tampa to kill this one rapper, <clears throat> but they passed down a lot of people that kill a lot of people mm-hmm. all the way down to kill this one rapper. I, I, but I'm, I'm gonna, they I'm gonna, don't see us as equal. They we, we can't because black people don't see us equal. I'm, I'm, it's, not, it's not arguing it. It's just saying that like the truth of it is is like. It's all about perception. At the end of the day, is they know the system is going to go harsher down on a kid going. You're going to get life regardless. Way. I know, like I got family members who are in are gone, fifty years. Yeah, for being the assistant driver for killing somebody of a different culture, and he had five years for what happened, but he got fifty years for a robbery situation on the other side. No, if you well, kill somebody, you're well, not the thing is, no. But, but what, I was, what I'm trying to say is, is the mindset of, of what you're thinking of, like. I'm gonna kill this person because as a black person, he's not he's the same as me of not less. But I'm they make examples person. of black people. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm trying to say they, they make examples of they you do. that when a person that is not like us gets caught up, you're going to be put not in Florida. In, in Florida, the person murder, that was murder, with him. No, no, they, there is there is there is stipula- uh, stu- stipulated sentences. Yeah, that's like gonna happen. Murder, if you Texas, murder somebody, no matter no matter if you do it accidentally. Or 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 pre or premeditated. You're gonna get life. Okay. Twenty years. Oh, take, take, yeah, we're gonna have to jump in there, y'all. Right. Unfortunately, we are out of time. <laughs> Say your handles, and we'll start with Garang. All right. Uh, my name is Garang. Uh, my handle is Garang dot uh, My first name, last name, on Instagram, TikTok. Uh, yeah. I'm Vida on Instagram. It's at Vida Joe. Manual underscore comedy on Instagram. Everything else is a manual. A M A N U A L. Really fast underscore with a Y. <laughs> <laughs> We're we gonna go. put it. Don't forget uh-huh. that. Go ahead. Oh, Terry. thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, Arne Bay twenty and shout out to Jordan Davis, Trayvon Martin in Florida. We still, we still think about you. Amen. My name is Dang. On Instagram is Dang Ding D E N G D E E N G. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Yep. Sarah, yeah. anything you want to add? And just follow us on all platforms. Ladies of Sosa on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. And yes, yeah, we're so happy that you guys joined us in the discussion. Make sure you tune into the next episode. Tell us what we thoughts you, that you, you want to hear. You, you, never, you guys back, never back. tell them to hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>